Unleashing Leadership, and I'm your host, Travis Moss, with our Season 5 co-host, Dave Nurchi. And this podcast is all about awesome books that we, that we get into about life, leadership, management, business, and our takeaways that we think would be good ideas with business and helping things advance and move the ball forward. Today's book, we're still working on The Hard Thing About Hard Things by Ben Horowitz. And we're going to take our observations and experiences that we've had. We're going to tie those to some of these takeaways and share with you what we're really passionate about, which is our day job to see planning group, where I'm the chief executive officer, Dave's our chief operating officer. And we take these things that are talked about in these books, and we talk to you about how we've actually used them in real life, or if we've thought about using them, or if we just have an opinion about it. And maybe it's, you know, just broader picture type of stuff, but. So many people talk about books and mentors and, you know, learning and all that kind of stuff. A pl- application is the key. How do we take this stuff from these books and actually apply it? And so if we can inspire you because of our journey, um, we'd be happy to do so. So as always, do us a favor, like or subscribe to this wherever you're listening or watching from. That helps other people find the show. And our main takeaway for today is WFIO, we're fucked and it's over. And every company goes through at least two. And this is brought to you by C Planning Group, fee-only fiduciaries, a wealth management firm that helps people overcome the challenges that are keeping them from personal fulfillment. And that you can find more information at seedpg.com. So that's seedpg, as in planninggroup.com. And Dave, back to our big point for the day. Yeah. It's a fun one. Where do you want to take it? Well, all right. So. I've been through this mm-hmm. prior prior to you joining us at Seed. Yeah, the genesis of Seed. I think that this is especially prevalent in um, startups um, or companies that have fully matured, but the markets move down without them, and they have to reinvent themselves. Mm-hmm. So I think that there's kind of like maybe two points where this is really going to happen. It could also happen with bad management. So I guess we have to throw that out there for us. It happened very early on, like very, very early on, right. um, the very beginning of the practice that turned into seed planning group years later. Um, just an absolutely devastating time to go through. I started the practice and then 2008 hit. And for those who don't know, that's a really bad time to be in finance. And so, you know, I'm waking up in the middle of the night. I can't pay the bills. I'm trying to figure out how to make things, you know, work. You know, you, you got sweats on it. You're like, well, okay, maybe if this doesn't work, what am I going to do next week? How am I going to make a car payment? That type of thing. Um, I had no choice. It happened. Second time, we were, seed originated as a, what would be called a hybrid firm doing commissions and fees actually originated completely in the commission world. And then it turned into a hybrid and eventually shifted to fee only. Um, And we purposely made the transition from commissions over to fees. But through that entire process, it was years and also very, very difficult. Everything got turned over on its head and it's like, Wow, you know, you're you're living on borrowed time to make this work. Um, however, it was not as bad as the first. Nowhere near right. as bad as the first. I don't know if it was because of being callous or whatnot. Mm-hmm. And then by the time we get through that, it's like you're battle tested. You could th- throw COVID ass. Who cares? You know, right? Throw you know, 2022 and the market crash at us. Who cares? Whatever, whatever you're gonna bring at us. It's not going to cut nearly as deep as it did early on in the formation, because and that and that's sort of the uh, now institutional kind of memory. Yeah, you know, You're more battle the tested. How we structure right. going forward. Yeah. So each any anytime something like that happens, you're more battle tested. You're more resilient. You're kind of like you said, it's just more. Um, what's next? Uh, so what I didn't hear there is the the it's over part. So did you ever actually think it's over or was it just the first we're fucked part? Yeah, we were talking about this before the before the episode. I forgot about that. Yeah. So my mentality I I like the first time I didn't have a choice. There was no it's over. It mm-hmm. was I don't know how to make this work. And 
my girlfriend at the time, my, now my wife, sitting down with me and basically like giving me the cold bucket approach of being like, what's wrong with you? You can go out any day and work harder and, and do better. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Go work harder. There was no like, oh, this isn't going to work. And, you know, I'm it's over. It was, yeah, you're fucked. But guess what? You better go get a shovel and dig your way out. Um, the second time it was like, oh, man, we're we're really fucked here. Um, but we already know how to dig. So, yeah, right. you know, it was like, here, you get a shovel, you get a shovel, you get a shovel. Let's go. We're shoveling together. Yep. Um, so I think that that's the difference. And my mentality has always been like, um, there's always something that you could take from it and grow from it and pivot from it. And, you know, the analogy I was using um, as we were talking earlier is it's kind of like sometimes the boat is sinking. And sometimes it's so you, you are fine if you stay on the boat. Mm-hmm. Sometimes getting on the life raft is the opportunity right. to build another boat, right? And so it's like one of those things where, yep, we're totally, this is, we're burning alive here, but look at where this is leading me. You know what I mean? I can I can take this as a launching pad and, and, and take that next step forward now. And it hurts and it's painful. And, you know, the seriously, the first time or two, it breaks people. Mm-hmm. Um, you and I were talking about this too. Like you got people who are going to go, you know, I'm, I'm just willing to go down swinging. And then you have other people that that's it. That's enough. Yeah. You right. Know, they go through one or two of them and then it's PTSD time. Yep. So the mindset there is what is one of the big differences. It's, this is going to happen regardless, but you have to have that mindset and kind of like tenacity to say like it's not gonna it's not gonna end what i'm doing or my dream or my my company like we're gonna get through this and then as it happens more right that magic number maybe is two like ben says um i think you also have probably as it happens more often you have more people in your corner right maybe more warriors at your company that you know are gonna grab the shovel and dig or be there to help you fix the boat or build a new boat so it's probably a different perspective too, as you go through it and it happens more as, so you got mindset and you have more people kind of fighting with you or or rebuilding what you need to rebuild. Yeah. I think you can be over idealistic um, when you haven't gone through one of these situations, right? I I think it's very, very easy to have this cookie cutter idea Mm -hmm. of everything's supposed to go like this straight up in, in, in a, you know, positive way. It's supposed to look like the charts and everything's going to be great and everybody's going to love your ideas and blah, blah, blah. Right. And and you may even get off to a start like that. Everything's going great. And then all of a sudden something changes and the stuff that you think is impossible to change will change. Because yeah. that's how it works. That's why it hurts so bad. Because yeah. if it's just the stuff that you could see coming, you expect it. But right. normally it's the stuff you don't see coming that, that, just knifes you right in the back and then you're like damn it you know what i mean what do i do about this now yep. um, but i think it's very easy to be over idealistic and that's that's why it's so crushing i think for some people i think some people are like it's just not fair and you can look at it well okay once it happens uh, we're totally fucked it's not fair i've been working too hard yeah. you know too many people put their money in this maybe yep. we made some bad decisions maybe we didn't but uh it's not fair you know, you think everybody just, if you just work hard, you'll get, like everybody says, if you just work hard enough, you'll get, you know, you can get anything. And we'll know that that's not the truth. You have to be working hard enough at the right things to get what right. you want, right? Like, like yep. there's right, a difference there. there. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I, I just think it's, it's, it's perspective and, and it's perspective breaking at the same time. Yep. So maybe it's not WFIO, it's WFBIO. We're fucked, bring it on. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, we're fucked, bring it on. You send, <laughs> send that to, uh, we're going to have to... Send that uh, to Ben. Send that to Ben. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, will you sign your book? <laughs> we're fucked, bring it on. 